Hey everybody, it's Chris and Rick Talk Guitars. This is Catch Up Time. Chris and I have been uh, kind of uh, incommunicado for a while. Both been busy. Chris, what have you been up to, bud? I've been busy. Like you said, I just looked to see what the last episode we did was, and it was straight into the amp. Oh, yeah. I, barely, I barely remember that one. So since that time, lots of house projects. There's been more of those. I have started a new job, so I've been doing... 472 hours a week um, <laughs> just while I get started. So I haven't really had much time. Um, how about you? What, what's been keeping you from guitar and other things? Oh, yeah, work. Uh, I've been getting into woodworking projects as well. Nice. Um, which, yeah, is, is taking up time. And, um, yeah, and just the, you know, summer yard stuff, planting gardens and mowing lawns and things like that. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've managed to to uh, sneak in some guitar here and there. How about, I think you just recently got a new guitar, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Why don't you, why don't we gush about that thing a little more? No, gush about my guitar? All right, I'll see if I can gush about my guitar. How do I even start? I got a new guitar. You gotta tell Uh, the story, man. Why did I get a new guitar? I got a new guitar because um, during the pandemic, I kind of moved, made a lateral move in my career. And I actually landed a really cool job. So when I when I was interviewing for all these jobs, I was joking with my wife that um, if I get one of these jobs, I'm getting a, a birth year guitar. <laughs> and I, I got one of the first ones I interviewed for. I couldn't find a birth year guitar that in my I did have a budget that I set, and my birth year, which would be 1961, don't tell anybody. Really, all I could get that like of my interest is like uh, probably a Melody Maker, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I already have a Junior. So I started looking at 335s, which is another one of my guitars. I'm, it's been on my list forever and just seemed unattainable. And from there, it took me, I learned a lot about 335 guitar, which I realized even though I played a number of them, I didn't really know that much about them. So now I know more than anybody really should ever know about <laughs> 335s. And I am a new owner of a, a ES345, which is a cousin of the 335. Um, and I got that because it's basically a 335 with some extra bling and a, some other gadget, but it is a 335. At its heart, it is a 335, and that's what I wanted, and it's an excellent guitar. And what, it's, what is uh, it specifically? Is it a, it's a 61 reissue or a, or a class? What is it? What's the deal? It's a, it's a Memphis Historic 64 reissue BOS um, 345. And they did a good job with it. You know, I really wanted to, I really wanted to find an old one, even like, cause I've played some from the seventies that have been really nice. Uh-huh. And, and I played like three from the late sixties and early seventies and they didn't really do anything for me. As soon as I picked this one up, I could tell that I'm like, I could deal with this guitar. And so far I've had it in a month and it's, it's everything that it, it looks killer, but it is killer. It's everything about it. I haven't found one thing wrong with it yet, and I've been trying. Believe me. So I want to see that thing. I want to play it, man. I want you to play it. It it needs to be played. That was the thing about it. It's a 2014 guitar. It's got kind of like the lightly aged look to it because of that VOS shit that they do or whatever that is. Whoever had it before me hardly played it at all. There's zero like you can't even tell that a string ever hit a fret. Like the edges of the nut were a little bit sharp, where I always like to take them down from the factory. So. It just, it's got a thin finish on it. It's going to get played a shit ton now. So it should wear in really fast. And I think it'll look great. Have you played it through all, um, pretty much all your amps? Does it sound great through every amp? I haven't played through every, like I said, I haven't had much time at all to to play it too much, but I have heard it through my Princeton, my 64 Princeton and my 61 champ. And it sounds fantastic through both of those. I'm doing, I'm getting ready for a John Prine tribute show on the 26th of this month, I think. So we've started doing so I, I brought the Prince in the first rehearsal and then I brought the champ and that sounds really good. That's like perfect for this lineup. And I might use that live too, but I haven't decided. Where's the show? It's in a place called Drunky Two Shoes in White Center. Have you heard of it? No. That's cool. It's a little dive uh, outdoors. I, we played there before. That out. I like it. Yeah. yeah, you should go. It's all outdoors. You know what? All right. Very cool, man. Yeah, so you're on the list. <laughs> so is this so? So this new guitar is it? Do you think it's going to take the place of of the the junior pretty much for a while in terms of being your number one? Or, or 
I think so. I mean, the junior does what it does really well, and it's great. And I couldn't see not having one. But this is the kind of guitar right now that I got that I I kind of want to bond with it. I kind of want it to be the one and only for a while. I want to. I definitely want to break it in, and I want to see what it can do. And I think, you know, the Riff Brokers have been a two P ninety band guitar band for a long time, and that's great. And we found a way to make them work together because we have different tone things going on. But it might be nice to bring in you know, a uh, semi hollow humbucker sound to this, to the mix. That's so, very cool. So far it does the rootsy twangy stuff really well. I'm really pleased with the way that does. I'm, I'm not really missing the Telecaster. Like I think I would be to do like these country bends and things like that. It does those really well. That's very cool. We should do an episode someday on 335. Like I said, I, I know a stupid amount of shit about them. And if, I don't do it here. I'm just going to do some more actual. <laughs> You're going to annoy your wife with it. Yeah, I think I think we should. Yeah, let's do that. But I'm I'm curious. Have you messed around with the little switch on the the little? I do, but the switch is cool. Knob. That switch is a, It's called the Variatone, and it's a source of much controversy, contempt, and all kinds of other shit because um, it's kind of it's it's of its era. It's back when you know they were trying to use electronics to just do like anything different to give you like different sounds so um it's kind of cool if you take it on its own terms and if you're like in a recording situation because the problem is is the further you go down the dial uh -huh. which dial switches in a series of like capacitors or resistor networks or something like that and uses some sort of a filter almost like a, a wah pedal where it just kind of shifts out frequencies uh -huh. so the more you turn it the quieter it gets because it's shifting i mean you're losing a shit ton of these frequencies from these wherever this range is so you can't expect it to keep its level and there's nothing that there's nothing for any makeup gain. Uh -huh. So it's not very usable in a context. You plug the guitar in, it sounds great. And you turn this thing and there's like a cool kind of timber to it, but it's too quiet. So people who do make it work like BB King is one. I mean, that nasally sound he gets, that's the very tone, but a lot of people will use like some, something for makeup gain, like a compressor or a boost pedal. I played with it, but not too much. And it's kind of cool. I mean, it's definitely reminds you of the seventies. It's just that, that <laughs> honky thin, you know, kind of. Do you of, think you'd find a use for any of the sounds or? I can find a use for just about anything, depending, the, given the right situation, like in a recording situation or something, yeah. where you're trying everything and stuff doesn't work. What's cool about it is I can definitely see like some of those nasally settings, like really punching through in a minute. So if you just put it up, you know, you get the volume, make up the volume, it probably sound pretty cool. But again, I mean, you can also get a Telecaster if you're recording. So, I mean, yeah. back then, I guess, you know, very early on in the guitarist evolution, it was always like looking for the Swiss Army knife, the most, you know, the most sounds from the guitar. And that's why they went through, you know, all kinds of gadgets that they played with on guitars, preamps and all that shit. So in that's the end, cool. um, guitar players are pretty conservative. So... As soon as you start straying, and Gibson should know this because they do this a bunch. You start straying from just just I want this guitar to plug in and sound good. Like you know, they I mean they kept repeatedly trying to get like active pickups or low low impedance pickups and all kinds of shit like that. I don't know. Yeah, just funky electronics. What were those? What were those guitars? The um, oh geez, now I can't remember. It's kind of like a blob. They were kind of like blobs, like a blobby um, explorer. Those oh art, yeah, the RD artist. Yeah. The RD yeah. artist had the active electronics. Yeah. yeah, like those. And they did. I mean, they put them in everything. There was a 335 that had the active electronics. They were just trying to make people like them, and they didn't. So <laughs> went nowhere. No, just a guitar that you plug in. We'll take care of everything when it comes out of the guitar. What we want to do with it, we'll do, we'll handle that. Exactly. But that said, the Variatone I think is pretty cool. It just I mean, it looks great on the guitar. It's such a piece of its era. And it functions. I mean, you can you can dick around with it if you want. So that's very cool. Well, did this scratch the itch of the birthier guitar? Pretty yeah, much. Yeah, it definitely did. Yeah, you know, it. I mean, it's really for me to get a really really cool guitar like this for my birthday. It's just never going to happen. And yeah. that's the other thing. It's like I want to be able to take this guitar, drunky sh two shoes, and not worry about it. You yeah, know I mean? I'm going to worry about it because I'd worry about any guitar I had with me. But it's not like. I'm going to lose a $20,000 guitar or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, it has to be playable. I don't want any guitars that aren't playable and by playable, they need to be gigable. And, you know, 
I need to be able to record with them, take them out of the house. Anything that I can't do that with, I, I really have no interest in. Yeah, that's cool. Because this one feels, it, it looks like a vi real vintage guitar, but it's, yeah, you're not going to be freaking out, acting like it's so precious, like a fucking $20,000 guitar or $30,000. That's cool, man. Yeah, what have you been playing lately? I mean, you, you mentioned you've been playing some guitars. What kind of instrument are you bonding with or hanging out with? I've been bonding with my Les Paul Classic, man, the Honey Burst. It's a That's cool, cool guitar, dude. It's got that thin neck. Um, yeah, I, I really reacquainted myself with that guitar. It's so funny because I hadn't played it in a long time. It's been at gyms. You know, it hasn't even been at the house. And then I kind of picked it up when I was out there for practice one night. And um, damn, that thing is cool. I just dig it. It's heavy, but, it, you know, you, you I, I, I don't mind it. Um, the neck is really thin profile. Super cool. Yeah, I used that for a rehearsal once when it was down at the space. Did you dig it? Um, for a riff, an entire riff book. Yeah, it was great. I was like, I really wanted it. I had a hard time putting it back. I almost just took it and told you that somebody <laughs> stole it. <laughs> Do you need a chiropractor after after playing it? Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with heavy guitars. I, I don't remember that being heavy. It's probably, what is it, like nine pounds or something? Or I, don't, I don't even know. Weigh your guitars. Yeah. I, I have 11-pound Les Paul, and that was my rehearsal space guitar for years that sat down the rehearsal space and i went there and rehearsals the are like that. oh that's yeah cool. the black one where you rehearsals are where you have a guitar on for two hours yeah, you know yeah. a lot of times it's like 45 minutes you know maybe an hour on at a show but at rehearsals i mean it's not hard to do two and a half three hours with the guitar on your shoulder i've never had a problem i mean yeah, and i have a herniated disc I just don't think of it. It's just something I don't think about. I do love, though, that this guitar is that heavy because I love, I've said this before, I just love to take that guitar and hand it to somebody. Yeah. And just look at the, the look on their face. They're like, holy shit. <laughs> How do you play this? And honestly, I don't think about it. I mean, I think it's, I mean, I, I know there's a lot of people that will not buy a heavy guitar and I commend that. That's cool. Um, but I don't, it's not something I think about. I don't want a 12 pound guitar. I mean, I wouldn't look for one i would seriously consider it but i didn't think twice about 11 pounds yeah i mean i guess everybody has that weight that they can't go past some people don't want to get past seven and you know try to play a gibson i mean you can play a melody maker yeah but. no i'm the same way yeah i don't i don't mind too much if the guitar is heavy if it's if it feels good and it sounds good and and is then that your heaviest I'm, guitar what is that your heaviest guitar i think so actually I think it's even heavier a little bit than the Explorer that I have, which is a big hunk of mahogany, but that's a cool guitar too, man. I, I've been digging that as well. I mean, and then I've been going down the rabbit hole, man. I've been getting into Los Lobos lately, like uh -huh. crazy, like reacquainting myself with their shit and the guitar stuff they're doing and shit and the guitars they're playing and shit. Those were, they were strapped. Wait, wait, which era? They play all kinds of different shit. Like I think the rhythm dude plays a Les Paul a lot. But Hidalgo yeah. plays like tellies and strats for for most part. Some and he had a cool like Japanese reissue Stratocaster thing. That he, that yeah, he together, that he put together that sounded really cool. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I've been doing yeah. that. Um, reacquainting myself with Yes, which is cool. Yes. I Steve I can totally appreciate that band, but I just never I I have friends who like they're like they're Rush and they don't get Rush. <laughs> I don't like that, but I will say, I mean, undem some of the songs are just undeniable, like in the context of like a film or something, when they play it as a backdrop, I'm like, I love them. But yeah. I bought that record when I was collecting records and try, and I just, even after all these years. Which my one? Not Jason, Fragile? Or? Tales of Topographic Oceans, oh, I think. yeah. And um, I couldn't make it through, but <laughs> they're awesome. I mean, I'm not, I just, they're just, they're like somebody else that, you know, like, for me, like Nick Cave or something, who is exactly. fucking great, but I just don't connect with for some reason, whatever. Yeah, I, agree I, just, I just interrupted you when you. Were no, I forgot what I was going to say, man. But oh, well, just Steve Howe, man. I mean that that dude. Yeah, I just love to listen to him play, man. He's he's so out there, but it, and he's great. So that's so I've been kind of doing that, you know, just kind of like playing a little guitar here and there, and then. Um, just listening to um, reacquainting myself with guitar players and, and just music in general that I haven't listened to in a long time. Oh, and television. I, I was listening to the Marquee Moon 
uh, album again. And God, that's good. It's a pretty good record. It's damn good. How about you've been listening to new music or reacquainting well, that's yourself? My, that's my biggest downfall. That's why I don't I haven't written a song in like three years. Or whatever. It's, I don't make time to listen to records. And I got to get over it because my thing is, is I can't just put a record on and like work or clean the house or do something like that. I want to sit there and listen to it. Yeah. You know? And I haven't had that kind of time lately. But I think if I just need to surround myself with music for even if I do say, all right, I'm not going to sit here and listen to this, but I'm going to put it on. I'm going to do whatever. Because if you're going to write or or just even be creative and think of like musical ideas, if you're not listening to music, you're just like nowhere. So you're, what, you, what you're doing is commendable and I should be doing more of that. But have you found that? Have you found that listening to a bunch of this stuff and you approach your guitar and you're all stoked again? Yes. You have ideas? See, that's what I'm looking for. That's, that's what's cool. cool. Yes, exactly. Because you get all stoked listening to Steve Howe rip through some, some of those yes tunes and then yeah and then i go grab my guitar and sit on the couch for a while and space out and play some shit you know so stuff in 8 16 time and shit so or whatever the it's slide rule. rule yeah the slide rule rock yeah well you need to do that I, i'm the same way i mean if i put a record on i i i get distracted i have to listen to the music rather than, yeah i just get sucked into it um but I, I, I force myself to do it just because I do, I do, I want to listen to, I want to keep that, like you're saying, I kind of want to keep that channel alive, you know? Yeah, it's important. And like I said, that's why I've been like kind of stagnant in my creative writing for a while, but yeah. I don't know the, actually a new guitar can give you, I've got a couple of things that I came up with guitar wise, like, and melodies and shit. But as far as like just feeling in that zone where like, Oh, I'm going to write a song. It's going to, a song is going to come to me. I'm going to get an idea and I'm going to <laughs> take it through the whole course. Cause I'll be inspired. That comes from listening to a bunch of shit. Is that kind of how you write? Or do you, did you ever go through periods where you tried to get disciplined about writing or do you just kind of, are you of the school that, you know, if it comes to me, I'll write it down and then I'll, I'll address it. No, you gotta be, I think you gotta be in the zone. I mean, you just, I mean, you just start thinking, there's things out there that when you're putting stuff together, that stuff just happens. And if you're in that mode where you're kind of listening and interacting with music and, you know, you're like kind of in your head, like even if you don't have music on in your head, you're kind of going through phrases and melodies and different things and ideas. And all of a sudden something will stick. You'll get inspired and you go in there and, you know, you'll get like, if it's not a whole song, you'll get like maybe a chorus and a verse, but other times, yeah, I mean, you'll just hear something, a record will affect you in such a way that you have to, when the next thing you have to do is you have to go spend time with your instrument. I mean, yeah. Even if you're not writing anything, it's just like you're open to new shit because you've been yeah. listening to something else. And well, that's I mean, what I know. I'm the worst at that. I <laughs> go to my room. <laughs> I've been kind of stoked, too, because we've got some gigs coming up, which is another well, thing. I, I saw one. Fun. Yeah, yeah. Where's yeah. One's at, where was it? We've got, well, we've got two east of the mountains coming up in july and then also which is super cool we're playing the tractor uh july 16th yeah that's gonna be freaking cool dude if yeah. is tracy gonna be in town drag her out to that show i will i mean i she's gotta see you she's guys. a youtube fan yeah totally i will see if i can make that happen i think Trivana dedicates a couple songs to her and i think you can go in buildings again can't you isn't this thing over with? <laughs> yeah we're yeah, done we're, we're we're over the hump man Wow. Until, well, until there's the variants get us or whatever. Well, yeah, there, and then plus there's really no coming back from this. I mean, I think I've I've got PTSD from this now. Now that I'm starting to venture out, yeah, like, I, a little bit goes a long way. Uh, you know, it's like, oh, I, I haven't seen people in so long. it's great. Talk, 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 and I'll say, all right, I need to go. I need to go. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm so damn used to wearing a mask. Like I have a mask. I have so many masks in my car and in, in the house everywhere. Like I'll still wear a mask all the time, which most places kind of require it anyway, still, if you're going to go into right. the places, but I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. I, I hear you too, man. Like we ventured out like uh, now and then, and it's just overwhelming, like being around tired. a bunch of other people. You're tired really fast. You got to go home and take a nap. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that's standard for me anyway, but yeah. Well, no, I, it's good. I mean, I think many people did good during this. I mean, I would like to have 
maybe created more, but musically, but you know, what are you going to do? I think you should just to reflect on what you did over your COVID vacation episode. <laughs> yeah, we can reflect. Or did we did one, didn't we? Probably. Or did we do one? I don't know. I'm a little loopy today. Well, um, so do you have you've got the John Prine thing coming up? Do you have other gigs coming up with the Rift Brokers at all? It seemed like there was some mention of something, but I don't know. Probably. I think the general feel is that things are starting to open up again. So I think a lot of the clubs are calling around and getting bills put together. So I'm sure we'll have some stuff coming in. That's awesome. Are you stoked about it? Or are you still kind of apprehensive? I am. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how I do actually out in the club. But um, I'm excited for that. I believe it is outdoors. It's like a kind of an open bar area. No, that's so that cool. would be cool. It's close to my house. I can just, you know, go out the back door when no one's looking when we're done. And hop a train and come right home. Nice. So, cool. no, I am excited. Yeah. So what's the word? So you said east of the mountain. So where are you? Spokane or what? No, Chelan. Chelan. Okay. A couple cool. wineries, man. Sweet. Play for the winos. East of the mountains. Bring your fly rod. <laughs> I know, right? Well, it's going to be cool because the first one, uh, my aunt and my cousins are coming out, which I never see. So it'll be kind of cool to connect with them. And then uh, Kelly, my sister is going to bring my mom's ashes and we're going to dump my mom in the oh, lake. Nice. Yeah. So that's awesome. Be cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's what she wants. She wants to be in Chelan. So we're going to, we rented this boat, this pontoon boat. And we'll all go out there and then, you know, It'll probably be where you, you, you know, you toss her out and it'll all come back. In place. <laughs> but yeah, it'll be cool, man. I'm psyched about it. I'm psyched to play, man. I, uh, yeah. And kind of, I've been psyched. I, I keep telling myself this, but I, I, I'm trying to write more. So I'm going to try to write um, and record. Jim and I have been trying to put together a studio out in his place, you know, and it's as, as we slackers do, it's taking forever, but slowly but surely maybe we'll eventually record some sounds out there that'd be great do you have yeah. a drummer you do have a drummer well, is, is it... we, we have a drummer in that band but yeah i mean we might involve him or you know whoever you know i'll play drums but i don't play drums so. <laughs> you should rec you should write more <laughs> i know i really want to i will i'm, I'm just gonna do it i'm just gonna quit whining and just just start doing it again. that'd be nice yeah. I think the world's ready for another batch of uh, Klein songs. Yeah, yeah. they better be. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, come on now. So let's see. What else is new in the world of guitar? Talk to me, man. Um, I want to see uh, that guitar. I want to play well, it. I want to. I, I just saw tonight, as a matter of fact, the, some previews of that um, Peter Jackson Beatles movie. Oh, dude, I want to see that. That footage is really cool. Really cool. cool. So they're just babies. The I know, man. Well, the cool thing is, like, I saw some in, an interview with him, and he was saying what really struck him is, you know, a lot of the stuff that came out of those sessions was so negative because they, you know, they were on the down slide right. of their career. But he says he found so much footage of like them joking around or having fun or. So I think that's cool because that's always been my perception of that era of the Beatles. It's like, it was just so down and everybody just didn't want to be there. And yeah. so I'm psyched to see that. Yeah. Yeah. You got to wait till Thanksgiving. Though. I just found out. Well, he keeps adding, yeah, he keeps adding footage, right? I guess he's got like six hours of. of yeah. It's three, two hours. Things. I so love it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a that's a music thing because one of the things going back to my three thirty five three forty five because that's the most important thing here. Yeah. Is um the three forty five I learned is kind of like the Zelig of guitars. Remember that Woody Allen movement? Yes, Zellig? I do. <laughs> Everybody played one, but you've never heard of it. Kind of. I mean, you've heard of it. I mean, I I was even I didn't know that much about you know the ES series. I knew what a three thirty four three forty five was and three fifty five, yeah. but um. That guitar is just starting to show up. George Harrison for a while played the same exact same color, same one for like a very brief time, amount of time. That's and the cool. internet is kind of obsessed with it. They're always like, hey, look, I've, they're just trying to guess where we got that guitar and all this other shit. 
but it's just started popping up everywhere. It's like, I haven't noticed And my friend, Nick po- pointed this out too, that um, when, as soon as you b- become aware of something, you just start to notice it everywhere. <laughs> so I'm seeing all these people playing 345s. Well, that you're right too, because I, I mean, I was pretty ignorant about, I just thought all those semi hollow bodies were 335s. I didn't, you know, until I started to see, oh, well, that one's got like yours has the double w- weird uh, inlays and things like that. And it's got the switch. And then I started to go, oh, okay, that's different somehow. And yeah, like Chuck Berry played a 345 at times, Freddie King. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. The guy in yes. See, there you go. There it is again. <laughs> oh, yeah, that guy. I love it. That's cool. Yeah, that's what's funny. Well, it's funny since you and I've been talking about those guitars. That's all that's coming into my feeds now, our three thirty fives, three forty fives, and it's like, okay, is that my next guitar? It's it should be on everybody's list. <laughs> it's, it's such as no, I mean, you can say that about so many guitars. I could say that about the Telecaster. I could say that about the Les Paul Junior. But it's definitely, and I said this. When I first got my Les Paul Jr., I'd been playing a Telecaster for years, uh-huh. and that was my guitar. It was my only guitar. And as soon as I got the Jr., like right away, I'm like, my playing is going to change. I could just tell that. And I started playing a different way. And this gives me the same vibe when I'm on it. You know, it's just like the, this. It's so kind of unique and just the way it responds. And it's a great unplugged guitar um, because it sounds kind of like a mandolin or something. I think this is going to change the way that I play. It's What's kind of, the neck like? Is it kind of chunky or is it kind of like a 60s? 60s? It's not, it's not very chunky, but it's not really skinny either. But very the cool. thing that's kind of unique about it and that I really fell for is it's kind of a rolled, they rolled the edges of the fret board. So, I mean, there's like fret edge binding on the, but it, it's very tiny because it's rolled over. So it, it just, your hand just fits around it really well. And it feels like a played in guitar. Very think, cool. Yeah. So. <laughs> excuse me you're excused so that's, that's about it for dude. me just working not yeah. playing guitar. so you got the new gig so more guitars probably since you you know if, as long as this gig holds out yeah we're gonna wait for a long while i mean i i don't need another guitar <laughs> i want to i want to get to know this one let's just say that you were kind of you were kind of saying you, you you thought you might be at that point where you got to get rid of some or did I miss yeah, it? Yeah, wait. When you, when you get to that point, you just you just don't do anything. And then if, if, if you <laughs> yeah, you got to take a later, deep breath. Yeah, six months later, if you still have that feeling, then you start looking again, and then you give it another six months. And if, <laughs> after a year and a half, you're still thinking you should get rid of it. Get rid of the thing. You've just wasted a year and a half. I mean, it, everything's going to go to the estate sale anyway. For so right, I have to get some sort of a Google sheet for Tracy and I that says what what to take. Lowest. <laughs> so when she's mark, when she's using the label maker to get ready for the estate sale, she can tag exactly. things appropriately. Yep. Well, no if deal. I'm still alive, I'm going to go to that estate sale and see if I can work a deal. No deals. But I'll probably be dead before then anyway. No deals. Well, cool, dude. Well, it's good to catch up with you, man. And um. Yeah. Yeah, let's. We're gonna get back into a regular cadence once Chris settles down in his new gig, and um, and we've got some topics in the hopper that we want to talk about. And also, we're I, I want to do some shout outs to some people next couple episodes because I've had we've had Chris and I have had some cool interactions with you listeners out there, and it's really touched us. It's so cool to know that you guys are out there listening. Um, but we'll do some shout outs, man. And then also, I, I we're I think we're gonna plug our guitars in. Play some guitar. We should do a riff. We should trade riffs. Like here, you show me something that you're really sick of that you do all the time that you can't get rid of. And I'll show you something that I do all the time that I'm really sick of and I want to get rid of. And we'll trade them and we'll kind of explain how to play them so other people can take these things if they want to, too. And we can get rid of them. I'm going to get like like an earworm. Like I can. I've had had this song in my head. Or a (laughs) chicken. I like that. Okay. We'll do that. We'll do that either next time or one of the next episodes. Okay. Awesome. Well, and also one other thing I'd like to add to oh. that is oh. I really want to get back into now that we can go out again and, you know, I would like to get back into live in the yes. in shed, but I, I want to, it's all torn apart in there and I have to put it back together and I just haven't had time. So we'll do it. Why. 
zooming. Still. Well, you put sight, you put sighting on the shed, right? I did. That's awesome. How long yeah. had it been without sighting? Fifteen years. <laughs> Tar paper. No. <laughs> It's at least 10 years. I don't know. It lasts a long time. I'd have to go out there every two years and run another roll of tar paper around it. But it, it made it. I love it. Yeah. It's a good looking shed now. All right, man. Well, thanks for listening as always, man. Check us out on social media. Check us out on Spotify, iTunes. Um, you got any parting thoughts for, for people out there, Chris? No, just play guitar, be safe, and have fun. Awesome. Until next time, everyone. Bye.